This picture here is a picture of a, a nuclear explosion from a practice bomb. Um, you see a nuclear explosion is a massive explosion. Now, um, in the last, you know, we were looking at the problems with nuclear power plants and we saw that there were some serious nuclear accidents at Chernobyl and at the Fukushima uh, power plant recently. And you saw pictures that the uh, tops of the containment devices had been blown off due to chemical explosions. Now, this is proof that there was not a nuclear explosion there because had there been a nuclear explosion at Fukushima, the, um, the destruction would have been about one mile radius around the, uh, the nuclear reactor. One mile radius, everything would have been completely vaporized and obliterated. And so, you know, obviously um, one problem that is not a problem with nuclear power plants is the threat of nuclear explosion. Um, in order to have a nuclear explosion occur, you have to bring together a critical mass, critical mass of fissionable material. Okay? Um, and that is a, a certain amount of of the fissionable material needs to come together such that the fission reaction is uh, sustained um, as a chain reaction. And um, for uranium-235, the two common um, fissionable materials used in um, fission nuclear bombs are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. And you need about 33 pounds of this fuel to come together in one place very quickly at one time. And if that occurs, then there's enough neutrons um, being given off by that fuel at, to sustain, whoops, sustain, and um, what we call out of control, out of control uh, nuclear fission reaction. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit today about, um, you know, how we get this fuel and how you bring the fuel together such that you can uh, cause a new, an uncontrolled chain reaction to occur to give you a nuclear explosion uh, on the magnitude of destructing a one mile radius in area. Okay, so first of all, uh, a lot of uh, building and deploying nuclear weapons is a very, very difficult and expensive operation to carry out. Um, the isotopes uranium-235 and 238 behave essentially the same in all chemical reactions. So this just to separate them um, is extremely difficult and relies on advanced technology that's not readily available to a lot of the developing um, nations in the world. Okay, so first of all, you have to, um, to get the uranium. And I mentioned before that the uranium-235 is the fish... Whoops... Whoa. Something. Oops, so sorry. Uranium-235 is the fissionable uh, material and plutonium-239. And you get uh, plutonium-239 from uh, uranium-238, okay? So uh, in either case, uh, you mine mostly the uranium-238. You separate out the uranium-235 or from the uranium-238, you... Um, you manufacture plutonium-239 from a neutron a capture type of nuclear equation, reaction. So uh, first of all, where does the uranium come from? Um, this is just a picture of a uranium mine. It's, it's a uranium is, a miner is an element found in minerals um, in rocks pretty much all over the world, but there's only a few places where it's, it's mined. Um, and in 2005, the last year that I have data for, 41,000 tons of uranium was mined worldwide. Um, the biggest mines are in Canada and Australia, and that's where most of the uranium is dug out of the ground from. In the 1970s, um, the U.S. actually was the biggest um, mining producer of uranium, but uh, not so much anymore. And when the, the uh, uranium comes mostly in the form of this rock called pitchblende, and pitchblende is a brownish-black uh, mineral, brownish-black mineral, um, that is found in the ground. Um, it consists mostly of, of uranium oxide. 
um, but it also contains lead and uh, radium, actium, polonium, various other uh, radioisotopes. And the reason why is because it's mostly uranium um, oxide, the uranium itself is in the form of uranium-238, but you know it's, it's always undergoing a very slow radioactive decay to give us all these other problems. And the last uh, stable isotope in the decay series, remember, is lead. That's why lead is found um, when you find uranium. You're going to find a little bit of lead as well. Uh, no matter what. Um, another uh, mineral in which uranium is often found is tobernite, and that looks different. It's green because it also um, contains copper. It's just a different mineral. So first of all, the uranium is located. It's dug out of the ground. It's mixed in with other um, minerals, and so the uranium oxide needs to be separated, um, or it needs to be uh, separated from the um, uh, the other minerals in which it's, it's mixed in the rocks. So out of the ground it's mostly in the form of uranium oxide, either uranium dioxide or trioxide, and, um, but it needs to be separated and that, and that takes uh, energy and money and effort to do. And as it is, that, that uranium is only about 0.7% ur uh, uranium-235 uh, when it comes out of the ground, and so it has to be enriched um, to get it up to um, fuel grade, uh, uranium would be about 3% uranium-235, the rest would be uranium-238. And weapons grade, uh, uranium has to be at about 90% uh, uranium. And so the enriching of uh, uranium to get up to these higher concentrations of uranium-235 is an expensive process. Um, what has to happen is uh, the uranium oxide is chemically changed to uranium fluoride up to uranium hexafluoride. Um, this uh, volatile uh, form of uranium then um, is, uh, is either put into a centrifuge or forced through semi-permeable membranes um, because it's volatile. If you warm it up a little bit, it becomes a gas and then it's forced through these different semi-permeable membranes or it's spun, spun, spun in a big centrifuge. And what happens is the uranium that's in the form of uranium-235 hexafluoride versus the uranium-238 hexafluoride, this one is going to be lighter. So it's going to, um, if, it's, if you're spinning it in some kind of a, of a, a centrifuge tube, um, the uranium-235 uh, is going to move to the top and the uranium-238 um, hexafluoride is going to move towards the bottom and so you can then separate um, and get uh, the uranium-235 separated out. It's expensive, it's uh, tricky, it's a very technological process and so um, you know it's it's one good thing to control the spread of nuclear weapons is it's just difficult to get the fuel into the fuel grade. Okay, so oh, I, I have it written down here. So this is how um, we uh, um, modify it to the fluoride. It's volatile in the diffusion process, and then um, then the depleted uranium. That's the uranium that has uh, less percentage of U two thirty five is used for casings and armor piercing munitions. So it used to just be stacked up and thrown away, and they realized that um, you could make better uh, bullets out of it. So um, it's also used in the in a defense for defense purposes okay so once you have purified and um, separated enriched I should say your uranium such that you have a high enough concentration of uranium-235 um, then that uranium-235 in a nuclear reactor can be um, help produce the neutrons to um, change the uranium-238 into plutonium-239 and in either case you'll need about um, 33 pounds of this enriched um, um, fuel uh, for one warhead, nuclear warhead. Um, there's other types of uh, fuels that can be used for uh, nuclear bombs. Um, the hydrogen bomb is a, a more devastating bomb because rather than um, relying on the fission process, this is fusion, and fusion gives off more energy than fission. So this is based on a, a fission, a fusion process. This is based on a fission process. Um, the last type of dirty of um, nuclear weapon would be what's called a dirty bomb. And a dirty bomb, it's a conventional explosive, but they've mixed in uh, radioisotopes. Okay, so say. Um, 
uh, some, um, you know, rogue uh, militant type of a person uh, steals some, you know, waste product from a nuclear power plant. They could take all that radioisotopes that are in the waste um, spent fuel cells and package them in with a conventional explosive. And then what happens is they just spew radioactive materials all over the place. You hear of of terrorists and whatnot putting nails and all kinds of things mixed in with explosives to cause more damage. Um, and this way they put radioisotopes in with the conventional. Um, so this is the this kind of the scariest when it comes to the terrorist front because it's a low technology uh, type of a bomb, whereas this is pretty sophisticated. All these are pretty sophisticated um, types of weapons. All right, so then uh, the way that uh, one needs to design a bomb is um, these were the type, this was the type that was used in Hiroshima, and this is the type that was used in Nagasaki. Um, one, in one case it was enriched uranium, in the other case it was enriched plutonium. But uh, what they do is they keep, um, say, separate the uh, enriched uranium, um, keep like uh, 15 pounds on one side and 15 pounds on the other side away from each other in the nuclear warhead. And then when it's ready, when you're ready for the explosion to occur, um, there's some kind of conventional explosion that pushes together the two parts of the fuel. And so the, the trick is, is to bring together the critical mass of the uh, uranium-235 or the plutonium-239, um, bring together a critical mass at the time that you want the explosion to occur. Okay, and what happens is then once you bring that critical mass together, there's enough neutrons to sustain an out-of-control fusion reaction, and very quickly, uh, a lot of, excuse me, fission, a lot of fission happens all at once, and it, um, it just releases a, a lot of energy uh, very quickly. And then the fissionable material is blasted apart and the reaction will stop because the, there's not enough neutrons to sustain, sustain it. So it's a very fast thing and you have to um, you know, plan it out very, very well. But that's how, how it works. It's, it's pretty um, basic if you think about it. Just keep the, the masses apart, smash them together when you're ready for the bomb to explode and you get a massive release of energy. Um, very quickly. And so one of the, the most important things to try to prevent um, a nuclear uh, weapons being used is to keep them out of the hands of people who um, seem to be out of balance. And so this is a, a, a satellite image of a um, nuclear material enriching, a uranium enriching facility in North Korea. And so um, obviously the world is watching that very, very closely because North Korea, you know, is a committed em enemy to South Korea and much of Asia and the West. And so the fear is that the, they, they have been able to produce nuclear weapons. They've done some testing um, underwater and also with some uh, missiles. And so it's, it's just that, that fear factor that some unstable um, nation will get a hold of these nuclear weapon technology and be able to uh, create uh, a lot of uh, destruction. So there's some serious problems with the bad guys. Um, with this high-level uh, waste, they can make a dirty bomb, so you've got to really watch the high-level waste. And with the um, breakdown of the Soviet Union, there was a lot of high-level waste um, that was not well guarded, and so that was a major concern for the international nuclear community. Um, the problem of them learning the technology, for example, in Iran, um, a lot of uh, these countries say they want to enrich uranium just to use for nuclear power plants, but they, they seem to be enriching way more than they would need just for a nuclear power plant because you only need 3% as opposed to 90%. And so trying to control the enrichment of uranium is a major issue. Um, the breeder reactors, uh, breeder reactors are used for nuclear facilities, but they do produce that plutonium-239 that can then be harvested for the plutonium type of a... Um, power plants, so you have to watch the storage of that and the tracking of that particular nuclear fuel. Um, there's fear that um, a terrorist will attack a high-level waste location and or attack a power plant. So there's lots of uh, fear around um, the nuclear weapons and or using what one wouldn't think is a nuclear weapon as a nuclear weapon um, to keep our world safe. So. Um, in summary, the bombs are very expensive and difficult to make, so um, that's been one thing factor that's been good to hold down some of these 
newer, more rogue nations from making uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, nuclear power plants don't have a high enough concentration of uranium-235 to cause a nuclear explosion, so there's no fear that if you live near a power plant, there's going to be a massive explosion that wipes out the entire town. And um, there are different types of nuclear bombs, and you should be aware of them. And it's important, one of the biggest issues is to keep the nuclear uh, weapon material away from the bad guys. Okay, so that's it for Unit 1.